Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new playlist on Pocket Bass. Pocket Bass is basically an alternative to something like Super Bass or even Firebase in that it's an entire inf backend infrastructure that has databases, authentication, file uploads, anything you ever need and it's all bundled into one pre-built executable file and that's what makes it different from something like Super Bass because although Super Bass is built entirely from open source apps and like stuff like Pro Postgres. That's what Superbase runs under the hood, right? And although Docker makes it really easy to self-host Superbase, the, the Superbase stack, it's still kind of a hassle to set up when you compare, when you look at, when you compare it to Pocketbase, which is basically just a single executable file. And not to mention Firebase, that's by Google. There's a vendor lock-in when you start using Firebase because obviously there is no self-hosting. Firebase, it's a Google, it's a Google service. All right, back to Pocketbase. Let me just really quickly go through the general direction and goal of the entire playlist. So basically what we'll be doing for the first few videos of the playlist is we'll be going through the basic functionalities of Pocketbase and how we can use the JavaScript SDK to interact with the Pocketbase API backend. So the emphasis will be on Pocketbase Pocket Bases functionality and less on the styling and the front end graphical interfaces. And then towards the end of the playlist, I will be eventually making a full stack social media app with Pocketbase. And if the, we manage to get to that point, Pocketbase, is, Pocketbase also has a real-time API that we can use to, to subscribe to real-time changes. And this would be really useful to create chat applications because chat applications really require real-time API. So we'll see if we can get to that towards the end of the playlist. The very first thing we're gonna do to get Pocketbase up and running is to go to Pocketbase's documentation website at pocketbase.io slash docs and download the right file for appropriate operating system. And for me, it's gonna be Linux. So in just a moment, you'll see how easy it is to set Pocketbase up. And that's kind of their main selling point here. It's just all in one single executable file. So just click that. It'll download a zip archive, which you can just go and extract and I'm gonna rename the directory to PB so it's easier for us and go inside of the folder. And what you'll see here is we can ignore the two markdown files. It's not important for our purposes, but there's a single executable file there called Pocketbase. So what you wanna do is open up the terminal. If you're in Windows, just use command prompt L. Mac users use terminal. So you can do dot slash Pocketbase space serve. Now that command is right, actually right here in Pocketbase IO's documentation website. You can just enter that and that'll serve our Pocketbase server in two different websites. So it gives you the API link, which is the rest the, the endpoint to the REST API, which we usually you can you can directly interface with the REST API that Pocketbase automatically generates, but we won't be doing that because we have our client side SDK, which is the SDK for JavaScript. And then there's the admin UI. So this is the cool thing about Pocket Base is that it offers you an admin UI that you can use to graphically manage all of the backend based stuff. And here we can just create a anything, like just test user gmail.com and just create and login. And then this will bring you to our really amazing Pocket Base graphical interface. Now I know that this pocket base UI's graphical interface is awesome and all and we'll be spending a lot of time here in this web interface. But before I dive too deep into the web interface, I just want to quickly hop back to our pocket base file structure and just briefly explain to you the system that pocket base uses in the back end. If you're trying to build just an app, a fully functional full stack app and you just want to push that app to GitHub or GitLab, just push the pocket base executable file as well as the PB migrations folder. But if you want the data to come along as well, if you want all of your user data and your tables and your rows and all of your contents in the database, the data itself to come along as well, just include that folder. If you don't, then just don't include that folder. And a third folder that you can make here and that you have to manually make is called pb underscore public. And this folder is basically the public folder that will that will be hosted by the pocket base executable file when you go to the, I, the URL, the, the URL's root. So right now it's not found because there's nothing here in this PB underscore public folder. If we made a new file, we can call it index.html and just say hello world. And here that's our file right there. And if I went and refreshed my page, you can see hello world. I can 
make a new directory we can call it test so there's test in there we can make nano index.html this is the test route and just save that and we went to index that's hello world if we went to slash test and that's this is the test route so that's basically just a static web server that you can use and that comes along with pocket base i've made a blank react application using yarn yarn create react app and basically what this command did was it generated this pocket base pb underscore app directory and in this directory there's package.json we have this build script here and basically at the end of the day when we're done building our react app our front end app we will run yarn build and they'll give us an output folder it's going to be a build folder that we can just take and just dump it into this pb underscore public folder and what they'll do is pocket base will automatically help us host our front end react application as well inside of this pb underscore public folder now if you so choose you can always host your react application your front end on some external server and you can still use pocket base the same but i'm just gonna host everything in just one place in one single environment and just chuck my react app in pb underscore public and let pocket base deal with it as well because that's just more convenient and that's what you'll be doing in this playlist but before i end this video i'm just gonna give you a quick demonstration so go to your browser and go to localhost port 8090 slash underscore that's the path to the web admin interface now i actually don't remember what the email and password was so uh, we could always just go and reset the database so i'm going to stop the server and just get rid of all of the folders here just delete that and basically what that did was just just reset our pocket base server we can just serve again and this should give us a brand new instance if i just go to the address here and uh, we can just make an email all right and once we're in this is the default environment so we can make a new collection here called test collection and we can add a field field one and let's add another field let's make this like a a number field and field two create that so now we have our structure with id field one field two if i go back to our file manager we should see that pocket base automatically generated the directories that we just deleted and this is brand new and if i made a i, I made new records here we can call this uh, hello and then this should be a number right so one two three so now this will be stored in our pocket base server and if we were to just stop the server and just get rid we can we just get rid of pb underscore data delete that let's reserve rerun the server just went back to localhost and underscore it's gonna ask us to create our first admin account again remember because we deleted the data folder and although it still remembers it still keeps the structure of the database it'll, it'll treat treat this installation as a fresh instance so we have to set up our admin account again so you can set you can set up a different admin diff admin all right, and you can see that it regenerates our database structure. It remade the test collection collection. It has the ID field one, field two, but we're missing all of our data. And that marks the end of this video. In the following videos, we'll be building our React front end application and we'll be looking at how we can interface with our pocket base back end from React JS. If all goes as planned, I'll be releasing the videos on like a kind of rolling release schedule type thing. And what it means is that if you have any questions when you're following along with my tutorials and you put comments down fast enough and I read the comments before I record the next video, I'll be I might be able to sneak in the answers to some of your questions in the next videos. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind and see you guys in the next video.